Chicago Department of Public Health is confirming that three people who stayed at a Chicago hotel have contracted Legionnaire's disease. And officials say anyone who stayed or worked at the JW Marriott Hotel on West Adams between July 16th and August 15th may have been exposed. Just how serious is Legionnaire's disease for those who contract it? And could the outbreak have been prevented? Joining us to talk about that and today's announcement are Dr. Stacy Raviv, a pulmonologist with North Shore University Health System, and William McCoy, a microbiologist who is chief technical officer of Phygenics, a water management company. He's also the author of Preventing Legionellosis. I hope I said that right, and has worked with many resorts and cities on this issue. Welcome, both of you, Thank you. to Chicago tonight. So, Dr. Raviv, what is Legionnaire's disease? What are the symptoms? Sure, Legionnaire's disease is an infection in the lungs with an organism called Legionella. Um, and uh, symptoms are really similar to other pulmonary infections. People may have fevers, cough, uh, in severe cases, shortness of breath, uh, headaches, muscle aches, and generally feel poorly. Mr. McCoy, one of the things that seems to happen in the news cycle is we hear about Legionnaire's disease, then we don't hear about it all, sort of like flesh-eating viruses, and then boom, it's back in the news. What is the, this cycle and why do we witness it and then it disappears? Right, it's a good question. Legionella is found in the environment, in uh, buildings that are not properly managed. The uh, Legionella bacterium can grow in the, in the plumbing of the building. It doesn't always happen. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. So it requires continuous maintenance. And um, when the Legionella bacteria grows to such an extent that people are exposed, then cases can occur in more than one at a time. And the public health officials then will recognize that as an outbreak. I've got, I've got pipes in my home. Some people have swimming pools in their backyards. People have standing water in a variety of containers, hot tubs. Why isn't it happening to them? Yes, sometimes it does, and the cases go unrecognized. And this is a, a common occurrence that people get legionellosis, but it's never recognized as that disease. So, Dr. Raviv, essentially it looks like pneumonia, right? Mm -hmm. That's and right. so someone who has Legionnaire's disease may come to you as a pulmonologist and would you automatically say, ah, this is Legionnaire's disease, or would you say it's pneumonia, and does it matter what you say as long as you treat it? I definitely would not recognize it specifically as Legionella, Carol. Um, and usually when we use conventional antibiotics to treat community-acquired pneumonia, we would be treating Legionnaire's disease, whether we recognize it or not. And so the people who are exposed, well, there are three people who have this disease out of this hotel, a large number exposed, but is that a, a meaningful number or do an awful lot of people simply fight it off or don't experience it? A lot of people fight it off, but there are many, many cases. According to the epidemiologists in the United States, <clears throat> there are about 25,000 cases a year that result in 4,000 deaths every year. So it's not rare, but it often goes undiagnosed. Does it suggest if any hotel experiences Legionnaire's disease, given what we know already, that it could have, should have been prevented and negligence is involved? Does that imply that? So I think uh, we wouldn't, you probably could answer this better than me because you're involved in looking right. for uh, bacteria and water sources, but um, Negligence is a very strong word and you, it shouldn't be used generally, but building water systems must be managed properly. And we see now many um, facility managers um, dealing with this problem proactively now because so many of the medical professionals are now much more aware of how serious the problem is. So going forward, you will see facility managers much more active in managing to prevent an accusation of negligence. Every one of these cases is preventable by properly managing the building water plumbing system. What does that mean? I mean, do I, do I periodically scrub it out? Do you vacate all the pipes? Do you throw bleach? I mean, what do you do? Great. So it's not possible to say exactly what should be done on every site in a general way. Each site must be um, individually analyzed. And so 
um, facility managers must look at their systems and decide based on site-specific characteristics what preventative measures must be applied. And you listed a few of the possible things that could be done, but it depends on the site. Not every building is contaminated with Legionella, uh, so those practices that you mentioned wouldn't be appropriate for every building. I mean, I think of when people have had chicken pox and they are susceptible to shingles, but they don't get shingles, that we have all of these sort of viruses or things cooking in us, but don't necessarily materialize. How was it, do you suppose, Dr. Raviv, that we ended up calling this Legionnaire's disease and not just three different guests ended up with flu-like symptoms and maybe pneumonia? Well, when you see a pattern of people coming from one spot and contracting a disease that we know can come from water systems and air conditioning systems of large buildings, um, we, we can put that together and call that an, an outbreak. And so uh, I have an air conditioner at home. Uh, for, as you look at all of the different things in your home, is this something people should be flushing all their own home systems over as well? Well, uh, documented cases of Legionnaire's disease are pretty rare from home air conditioners. It tends to be more, and, and maybe that's just because we identify multiple people coming from larger areas, but it tends more to be cruise ships and hotels and large convention centers and places like that. The mortality rate for the people who end up dying of Legionnaire's disease, are they typically older people or vulnerable people or do perfectly healthy young people succumb to it? Sure, like any infectious disease, people who are older um, are going to be more at risk. Um, and in this particular case, people who have underlying lung disease or are smokers. And you also are concerned about people whose immune systems aren't normal. Those would be people with diabetes, people with cancer, people who are taking immunosuppressive agents. But we do see cases in people that are much younger in, th in their early 50s and their 40s. People with uh, much long younger and healthier profiles are also susceptible. So all these people are getting letters now saying three people have died at this hotel, a lot of you have been exposed, what should they do? Carol, I'd use common sense. If uh, uh, symptoms arise that would ordinarily make someone call his physician, um, then that's appropriate. If someone's having trouble breathing, you should go to an emergency room. But the, the regular cough and not feeling 100% that you might get on a regular basis probably wouldn't be alarming. So don't run to your doctor unless it feels bad and you've got the letter that says if you're feeling bad, run to your doctor. <laughs> All right. Dr. Raviv and Mr. McCoy, thank you very much for joining us on you're Chicago welcome. tonight. You can learn more about Legionnaire's disease on our website. Go to our homepage and click on the story to read a fact sheet about the symptoms, the treatment, and more.